So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. I'd like to call to order at Verizon time 631, according to the cell phone. First order of business, we have approval of October 18th minutes. A motion we approve the minutes. Second. Wow. We have a motion made and seconded to uh, accept the minutes as presented of October 18th, 2021. Any comments? Here are no comments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, we have a 3-0 on the acceptance. Next order of, let me make that go away. Next order of business, so we have a highway department update. George, what can you tell us about the highway department? Uh, we began some projects done this year. Uh, old Amherst Road got repaved. Uh, we're building a bunch of basins in town. We did them up on Route 47, South Silver Lane. We got a second one to do on, or a third one to do on South Silver Lane. Next week, I think we're doing that. Um, Buttoning up our complete street project. Hopefully, buttoning up uh, North Main Street here shortly. So, starting to wind down, get things ready for winter. Make some repairs on some of the trucks and stuff. Um, Cranberry Pond. I guess last year we've had some issues with cars and stuff being stuck down on the yeah. uh, east side of it, up the you know, railroad track side. I was wondering if we could close that section off either with a barricade or a cable or some sort from the top and the bottom. Um, people plow through the snowbank on reservation roadside to get down so they can ice fish and stuff like that. But then people tend to start going up the other side and get stuck in the tow truck. People have problems and then Leverett PD's <coughs> complaining a little bit that they're always down there and Sunderland PD's always down there. So we're hoping to change things up a little bit for the winter over there so nobody can get on that side at least. Uh, George, can we, do, can we legally do that? Um, it's a road that's not maintained in the winter time. I mean, we could, I mean, I we'd have to find out from PD. I think Jeff, Jeff talked to. I talked to the transportation planners at FERCOG, um, and we seasonally closed the road already. Mm -hmm. um, and they said oh, wow. the biggest thing was if emergency vehicles needed access. And I think that the plan that George described. There are no residences, there are no businesses on that stretch that yeah. uh, Cranberry Pond would still be accessible from the west uh, along Reservation Road. Um, I say accessible, you're still not allowed to park there, <laughs> so people could walk. Um, but I think that, that they didn't have any concerns with physically closing the road as long as um, there weren't objections by emergency responders. Oh, yeah, we could give them a key, yeah. right? What's that? You can give them a key if you've got a lock on it or something, yeah, right? Yeah, if we put a cable up there, we'll put some type of a lock on or something so the PD would have it. Yeah, um, that would. But, I mean, obviously, if they get so, caught down there, I'm probably going to have to, for an emergency, we're probably going to have to come in and sand it down through there because, you know, it's going to be icy, which it always is every year. Yeah. <laughs> well, plus it's not our, I mean, it's not our pond. No, you can ask someone to. So. We might have to ask them too. So. Uh, so you, have to, you, have to, you have to ask them. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that, that would be. Yep. Courtesy. So that's just a little update on that part, so. All right, see what they say. Yeah. Call the chief and ask them what they say. Um, while while we have George here and the the winter road closures, I believe go into effect Monday. Um, we did have the the list of road uh, recommended road close winter road closures. If we wanted to. These are closed. Here you go, clerk. They're the the same roads as 
last year. Can you read that off, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's what, that's what the clerks do. Cemetery Road from House 1 on South Main Street to Riverside Cemetery. Clark Mountain Road from House 42 Easterly to Mount Toby. Cross Mountain Road from House 28 Northerly to Middle Mountain Road. Ferry Road Westerly to the Connecticut River. Ferry Road to Williams Property from Route 47 Westerly to the Connecticut River. Gun Cross Road from 47 Westerly <coughs> to Falls Road. Gun Mountain Road from House Number 23 Easterly to North Mountain Road. Hubbard Hill Road from House Number 2 Easterly to the Leverett Line. Middle Mountain Road from House Number 10 to Mount Toby. Mount Toby Tower Road from Reservation Road to the Fire Tower. North Mountain Road from the intersection of Claybrook Road northerly to Mount Toby. Reservation Road from House Number 40 Easterly to Route 63. Reservoir Road from the Reservoir Easterly to Mount Toby. Mm -hmm. Reservoir Road from the Reservoir Easterly to Point of Termination. Whitmore Cross Road from Route 47 Westerly to Falls Road. Okay, do I get a motion for that? Uh, motion. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, recommend the, the uh, road closures for the uh, winter season starting November 1st, running through April 1st. Yep. Okay. Any discussion? No. The, uh, without hearing any discussion, something that we do every year, without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three, three out of three zero on that. George, what, what do you, uh, What's your thoughts on uh, the um, coming down 47, you know, where they have the new radar sign? Shouldn't there be a speed limit sign further up the road, though? Because they're, they're because of. Sign or after the sign? Up by Claybrook Road. Because right now there's no sign up there. So technically, the speed limit doesn't go to 35 until you get to the radar sign. There originally was one there. I'll have to, I'll have to check with the state guy tomorrow. Yeah, and and I, there I, there used to be a sign. There used to be a sign almost across from Claybrook. Yeah, as up actually up from yeah. Claybrook, but now there there is no sign there. Okay. So if you could check on that. Yeah, I'll double check that tomorrow. Okay. Um. Now, what what are they going to do on the pothole? On, on they're not potholes. What are they going to do on the low structures along North Main Street? Uh, that's a tricky one. They, the state guy, we met with the state guy. They came out and walked it. Uh, there is one that's significantly lower than the rest of them. Is that the one that has the dig safe? It's marked out for dig safe. Possibly. It's it's right out right out here. No, it's all the way. It's down towards North Silver. Oh, really? Yeah, there's one that's about an inch and a quarter low. Huh? An North inch and a quarter? The rest of them are about three quarters. Um, well, not the rest of them. There's a few of them that are three quarters, and then there's that one that's a little deeper. Yeah. They talked about fixing that one, but the more you, I talk to like some of the Warner Brother guys and stuff like that, and the state guy, we're, we're gonna have issues if we start cutting them off in the long run. It's gonna start, yeah, it's gonna start breaking off. It'll break apart there and then more than anywhere else. I think we're just probably gonna have to live with them. Um, I mean, if anything they wanted to do, that one that's an inch and a quarter, they were thinking about doing right around the ring, putting a riser in there and then doing like a mastic or, or some type of a sealer mm -hmm. right close to it. So it's not like blacktop, but it'll be 
I don't know if that'll peel apart eventually, you know, quicker than just leaving it. I know it's a, a little bit of a, a thump when you go through there, but. <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I can talk to the Warner Brother guys some more and see what they really, what they think really is going to happen, so. But wasn't the state watching that? I mean, did anybody break out a, a, a laser transit? I didn't, I didn't see any of the state guys measuring them structures when they were raising them. Yeah, that's um, what I would think. There was a couple on North Silver that I questioned that we ended up putting risers in. And had to put a little bit more blacktop because there wasn't enough reveal on them. Yeah. To put enough blacktop. So we put risers on them and they paid those and those are pretty good. But I never saw the state guys or anybody out there measuring these things. I know we had to have them guys come back a second time, the structure people that put the structures, raise the structures, because they were putting they when they were rebuilding a lot of them, they were leaving gaps between the bricks, they were using dry mortar. It, it was it was a mess. So the state guy caught that and you know, and myself. So he called them back and said they had to do all of them over again, which they did, but they still didn't measure the ones that were in the road. Mm -hmm. Some of them, plus they did the driveways first. So when you're going through mm -hmm. there, you're gonna match the driveways. Otherwise, you're gonna have lips on every one of those driveways. So yep. when you're matching the driveways and they can't match the basins at the same time because they're all different. So they would hit one basin that was good and the next one would, next to it would be too low. So it would be, there, there's your bump. So they had a lot of that issues. Warner Brothers was having a hard time when they were paving that because I walked with them most of the day that day. So what about the, uh the the grass that they're planting some of it's coming in um we're starting to run out of some nice weather for the grass to grow i mean you're going to get some i bet you you'll have to have them back in the spring on some of it but there's some low areas of loam an area and you know in some people's property that there's a real good v instead of a good nice transition so i talked to adam last week about a couple people that called me uh, he's going to have them put more loam in certain areas, but there's a couple more that we're going to have to walk through and take a, take a peek. It'll be on their punch list of stuff to do. So are they, going, are they going to have to maintain silt bags in their catch basins over the winter then? I if, they, if they don't get that. grass coming back? I don't know. I would some of the think grass so. they planted is starting to pop up really nice and some of it hasn't yet. Mm. That, I, just, I was just wondering because I mean, you could have a mess on your hand. And is part of their is there part of their process when they get to are they going to uh, uh, suck all the catch basin? Are they vacuum all the catch I basin? That's it. That's in the uh, contract. Is that for? Are they going to do it this fall? or Are they going to do it? I haven't heard. So you, we probably want it done in the springtime, right? I imagine so. Yeah. And not now until the grass until the grass gets established. Right. right. You can ask. I'll ask Gavin that tomorrow too. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't think I have anything. There's anything else for me? I don't think so. Davey, you have any questions for George? No, I think we're good. Christine? Crystal? I'm good. All right. Thank you, George. Awesome. Thank Thanks. You, have a great yeah. night. you too. Hello, Caitlin. Hello. Good evening. Is that a hint? It is. <laughs> Give us, what do you got? Okay, so uh, the Board of Health met tonight, discussed and voted, and immediately, as of October 25th, 2021, the Board of Health uh, adopted an order rescinding the September 16th, 2021 uh, town mask mandate. And um, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> and um, is instating a mask requirement for all unvaccinated individuals, not fully vaccinated <clears throat> individuals. The verbiage will be much neater. Um, in all I indoor public, in all public indoor spaces, and all private indoor spaces that are open to the public in the town of Sunderland. Um, but once, once again, as we're not fully vaccinated 
individuals. Masks are still required. This is just a note. Masks are still required at Sunderland Elementary School for all students, staff, and guests per the Sunderland uh, School Committee policy. We just wanted to make sure that people know the that. difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's unvaccinated individuals. We also want to remind the public that individual businesses can make their own mask requirements. So if it's on their door, you should follow their masking requirements. If they feel comfortable with people coming in with masks, you need to put a mask on. And when does that start? Immediately. It's effective immediately. Yep. I, that, hmm. I thought I tipped my hand. I was going to say, I know you didn't get that. Everybody got that? Nope. Okay. And we were very fortunate to have a school committee member in with us discussing it. Good. Do you have any questions? Uh, as, long as, as long as that we don't make our, our businesses into vaccination police that's fine you know no it, it is that, and that's the only generally, thing generally um i'll tell you what's really it is at this point um you know you, it kind of reverts back to the way it was in the summer yeah i believe yeah it's kind of like you know that like having a no shirt no shoes policy Correct. If it's a private business they can do whatever they want in that Correct. respect and, and if it, you don't you like know, it you don't have to go um, it would be you to wear a mask, and um, the, it's essentially children need to wear masks mm -hmm. at this point. Um, and as far as revisiting the issue, we went back and forth a lot in the meeting about whether this was the right time to lift it, because it's already the end of October. Right, you're heading into flu we're season and everything. Into indoor season, yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, students coming back. But we, you know, the percentages, the numbers are where they're going to be. Um, so at this point, we're living with COVID. And the kids are going to be vaccinated within a month. And we're just going to watch the numbers, watch the metrics. If need be, we will hold an emergency meeting. We will advertise it. We will ask for the input. And we will revisit the situation. Yeah. Masks work. Vaccinations work. But at this point, I think we need to go with the numbers and see where that leads us. That was one added benefit last year of having the masks because we had a, such a low flu incidence it, numbers it and cold. Masks work for a lot of things. Yeah, it actually was a huge, it's put true. a huge dent in the flu last it's year. True. So. so we're going we're gonna to just follow it <clears throat> closely. Yeah. Okay, so and I, as I always say, we are available. Email the town. Email Board of Health, call, someone will find me. How's our case numbers looking now? Um, as of today, we have seven yep. uh, over the last 14 days. Yeah. Of those seven, five are UMass students. <laughs> but we'd expect so, in terms of the percentages. Um, yeah. That's kind of typical. Yep. Um, the UMass students, they kind of get through it pretty quickly. They, they quarantine and they. You know, they're they, testing and everything. They, still, yeah, yeah. They're testing and they, you know, so we really have to, the way I look at it, you know, we, um, but that is what we kind of went back and forth on in our discussion, was the UMass students are the ones, you know, they stand in line at Subway and they go through 7-Eleven yep. and they go through Dunkin' Donuts and they aren't really the ones sitting in our restaurants, they aren't really the ones in our library, they aren't really the ones. So that that we, we try to consider as much as possible on how you get the spread, how it happens, and and so that's what we're looking at, and so that's why we think it is time 
we're doing the best we can with what we've got. Yeah. And uh, epidemiology is none of our specialties, and I swear it's more of an art than a science. So, any questions? Anything else? No. So, so, so basically, um, what what you're saying is that starting now in the town of Sunderland, inside a public building such as our town offices, masks are not required of people that have had vaccinations. If you haven't had a vaccination, masks should be worn. Yes, and private. Places private open to the public and that would include restaurants yep, bars. convenience stores PTO. yeah places of business okay that would have to um and I, I i don't think you really have i to me it's 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 fine i mean you have you know we said all along that we're trying to follow the the numbers follows follow the science That's fine, right? Is it? Yeah, okay. I, yeah, it is. I, I mean, you, you can't. I mean, I and 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 I, I just will just tell people. I mean, it's your choice. No one's stopping you from wearing a mask. If you want to wear a mask, or if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask right yep. now, wear a mask. As I, we also said, um, in a personal aside, um, my family, my husband and I, and a couple of our friends, we are still going to wear masks until our children are vaccinated. Yeah. You know, in public, you know, when we're out with them and stuff. And I said, is that kind of selfish? Because we're we're not wearing masks. There's people who are susceptible and there's people who are and we're not considering them. We're but until our own children are vaccinated. I, I would think I, to me that's that's that to to me that's the only thing. Is is children as of yet have not been vaccinated. Right. And that, that that would be my the and and I understand if you're a parent um that that's really the choices that i mean a choice that you have to that you have to make that being said um it's still all about your personal responsibility right. also so yeah. if you feel comfortable wear a mask continue to wear a mask i don't think anybody looks at you strange at least in massachusetts right now if you're we live. We're you know I, I mean i i've been in north carolina a couple times and and I don't care what people tell you. I've been in a Home Depot and Lowe's. Well, not so much Home Depot, but Lowe's down there, and 99% of the people are wearing masks. So, and no one looks no one looks at you funny if you wear a mask there either. So, I, I, I don't know. And and if you look funny at you, fine. That that's that's your prerogative to look at somebody. They're probably know. not looking at your mask. I, yeah, I don't I don't have a problem with it. So. Did you have a question? I, I just wanted to mention since we were talking about kids and vaccination status that Sunday is Halloween and and there's no official guidance or anything but just realize that the kids are not yet vaccinated they're going to be going around um, so just a, an encouragement to the public to think about it and be smart I think the library is doing the same thing that they did last year where people can socially distance pick up a little bit of candy bag, right, uh, right. pre-package pre so you know, both for parents of kid unvaccinated children who might be trick or treating, and as you're, if you're going to be giving candy out, just again in the back of your mind, remember that that the populations are probably right. unvaccinated, and and keep safety in mind. Right, not big groups, and um, yeah, yeah. To the door one at a time. Yeah, yeah. So, so we decided not to legislate parenting yep. through the board of health. We did it last. We decided that last year, and we decided again this year. Yep. It's a parenting issue, not a, in That's our right. opinion at the board of health. Only. The, uh, uh, the select board has has we've been accused of canceling Halloween a couple times. Um, well, if the, there's a, the, a storm or something, that's a little different. This, well, we were just and, and but it, but again, it was never the board never. We actually never. Yeah, we never canceled. And and, and again, yeah. I. Mean, yeah. There's nothing wrong with personal responsibility, and if you and again and I reiterate that if you don't feel comfortable sending your kids out trick or treating, then they shouldn't go trick or treating, and 
I, I mean, it's difficult, but that, those are the decisions that we make. And I'm not saying being a parent is easy. Trust me, I know it, being a mm -hmm. parent is not easy. That being said, you 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 have obligations as a parent, and and you can't and and you can't forego those responsibilities. And if you feel comfortable with your children and they're in their mask or whatever they're doing, let them go. And if you don't feel comfortable, and don't, because guess what? There's going to be there's going to be a Halloween next year also. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Plenty of time to eat lots of candy. Yeah. From strangers. That, that being said, I, I mean, okay. Any questions? Peter, you have any questions? Okay. I, I, and, and again, we're, we're, we live in a, I mean, right now, and, and, and you can't minimize it, the, the importance of, of, of personal responsibility. I, 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 I truly believe that, but I think we're all, we're all capable. And sometimes I think people lose sight of that fact. Yes, Peter. I just, you know, it's good to, from the school's perspective, it's good to keep in touch with the Board of Health to make sure we understand, you know, we're all working towards the same thing. And, right. You know, we just have a different population in the school with, with so many young ones that are obviously unvaccinated. That, that therefore, we're maintaining the mask mandate in the school uh, until further notice because Right now, that's the only sensible thing to do. So. Right. I only commend the school for the work they've done. The, in the whole thing, I mean, they they have done an outstanding job. Very quick to respond to a concern, making informed decisions. Not not only making, but making common sense decisions. And and I think that's. And, and with the understanding that one size don't necessarily fit everything, so I, I just think it's in, it's important that that we no, continue that. Job. And it's very notable that any case that has come into the school, which is an obvious thing during a pandemic, no no cases have ever spread from the school. Well, that's the, the, what amazing. <laughs> that's their policy, their procedure. The, and I'll tell you that that nurse at that school and those the teachers and the staff that are following the policies and the procedures is are amazing. And and, and I and I'm, I'm I'm also going to include our the faculty as well as staff is besides administration. There, no, no, there's, okay. no, I, no, no, but I'm, I'm just staff, saying. But they, everybody, that they, they, they're, they're they, all following these. And and, they're, they're doing exactly what. Yeah. Everybody should be doing. They're just doing it. Like they don't even think about it. So it's really, I, I'm, I'm amazed at what they do. No, absolutely. It, it's people. It, it's it's people taking responsibility for their job and for themselves and for others. That's and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. We're going to talk about sewer next. <laughs> All right, next up, sewer rate discussion. Jeffrey, what do you got for a sewer rate discussion? Uh, I have good news for sewer users. Um, we, the town has paid off the uh, debt service for the sewer relining. Um, nice. And therefore, the proposed Fiscal year 22 rate um, is eight dollars and thirty cents lower than last year, um, and the proposed rate is three hundred and three dollars and eighty four cents per unit. And the way we got to that figure is the um, budget the town meeting approved for the operation of the wastewater treatment plant divided by the number of sewer units. Um, and as far as the number of sewer units, it was the same as last year. We had one come off and one go on. Yeah, so, so the wash. It, it evened out. Well, that's so good news. The, the, sewer, the sewer is a pretty straight, the, the sewer, we're also sewer commissioners. Um, and and it's, a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward thing. We, we, uh, we have a budget established at town meeting that, and then, there's the assessors and our sewer get together to find out how many how many user units are 
yep. involved. Simple division tells us what it is. So, yep. all right. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to set this FY 2020 sewer users rate at $303.84 per unit. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Oh, I think it's one of the best deals in town. Three dollars and three point eighty four. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, three oh three eighty four. We'll be able to send out bills per unit. All right, great, thank you. Next up, uh, FY twenty three budget letter. Yes, um, and I had uploaded a document and sent it around and then reviewed the capital planning committee bylaw and realized that um, one of the dates is actually set by bylaw and was not what I had put. So, um, a little update? Pardon? Have to do a little update. Yeah, a little, a little update, but basically uh, every year at the beginning of the budget development process, um, we send out, or the select board sends out a letter to department heads sort of talking about the budget priorities and um, giving them an idea of, oh, hey, we, we had a huge surplus last year, go crazy, yeah. <laughs> or it wasn't a great year, don't, you know, be careful. Um, the last couple of years, we have asked for level service budgets, yeah. um, which means we understand that there's inflation and cost of materials and everything goes up. So um, it is, we're not asking for a level budget. We're asking for what it would take to maintain the current existing services, services. for each department. Yeah, yes. uh, that, that's what I'm at least recommended in this draft memo. Um, the proposing that um, operating budget requests are due January 10th, 2022. And then um, what I just learned is that the deadline for capital requests is the first Friday in December. So I updated that to December 3rd, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that's what this is. And then um, happy to make adjustments um, or if it looks good, we can send it out. If you have different thoughts or recommendations. Um, but this is the beginning and then I put it all in the budget spreadsheet and then we start having the budget hearings usually sometime in January. Yep. It's a good start. Take off. Crystal, you're going to get your first budget. What do you think? Bring it on. I mean, what you're can really I do, happy, right? You're huh? be doing budget? Well, For much of your time. life that you'll wish you had. No, anyway. <laughs> All right. That looks, it looks fine, Jeff. Let's let's send it out. Okay, great. Next up is uh, ARPA priorities. Yes. So we began discussing this, um, and this has a little bit of an update as well from the one you may have seen um, maybe a month ago, and then. I've been buried in, in other fund reporting details, but you'd requested sort of a, a list and a prioritized list. And I think that one of the, I guess what I'm struggling with, so I, I, I gave a list of, of potential projects after discussing it with the, the departments is, um, the revenue replacement funds of which we have about 345,000 available um, are much more flexible. And so adding up the total requests, specific requests that would be revenue replacement, we have about 362,000 um, and I should also step back and note that we have until December 31st, 2024 to spend this money. So these are current current day requests. Um, the non-revenue replacement funds 
are more specific, um, fewer categories, and we have more money available, about $740,000. So uh, I guess part of the challenge is, and, and something that may help me further prioritize this list, is to understand you know, if the select board had any feelings hey, we want to spend a third of the revenue replacement funds in each of the three years that we have to spend the funds, or we want to spend half up front and we want to reserve, or we want to keep a certain amount in reserve in case we need it because it's more flexible. Um, I think, or hey, we have this amount in requests, great, let's spend it all and get it out the door. Um, and then the non-revenue replacement funds is is going to be i think a little bit of a challenge because there are, it, it's not enough for some of the bigger projects we have um and but it, it's bigger <laughs> bigger than the smaller projects combined so figuring out how we spend that as wisely as possible and you know so I don't know if you want me to go through and list each of them and sort of the estimated expenses associated or... Yeah, I, I think that'd be a good idea, but why, why don't you put that like in a spreadsheet for, format for us so we can take a look at it, okay? Okay. And sorry, did you want me to... for the non-revenue replacement? I'm sorry? Non-revenue replacement? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Uh, that That's where we have about 740,000 yeah. but not 700,000 in pro you know the for example if we were to extend sewer to plum tree yeah. that's and a 20 40 million dollar project 6 46 million and that 6 million oh we had a study done yeah Remember that Dave? that was a lot I think that was the first it? phase of yeah. the, the implementation the, I think it, I I thought it was over 20. It was pretty crazy. Depending well, on which you, option we went with. But. Well, yeah. we, we, we can pull out that study yeah. look at it. Um, but it, it, was, it, was not, it, was, it was more than $740,000. Yeah, 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 exactly. That, that, that's my point. Yes. You, you, you can say 40, I, I can say five. I know yeah. it doesn't matter because we have there's $740,000 available. Yeah, right. But, and, and the other consideration that I'm still unclear on and i think everybody everybody that's looking at this is unclear on is what the reporting requirements are one yeah. of the things that i have heard um is that they're onerous and it's people municipalities are being advised to choose one or two projects just so that minimize your reporting and everything. right yep. um that being said one of the recommendations from the rapid recovery plan was to hire an ARPA grants administrator, in which case, if it's not my headache and we're paying somebody else to do it, uh, we gotta yeah. fill up their time, um, so it, it might be easier. But I think those are some of the things to, to keep in mind as, as we look at this list. Um, and, and nothing, I would say nothing is urgent, but if there are certain things, uh, I think there are certain things that will affect the budget planning process. So, for example, if we decided to pay for the emergency rate, the seventy-five thousand for emergency radio upgrades out of ARPA funds, then our capital we oh, could, we wouldn't have spent it out of our capital budget last year. So, our the amount in capital is increased this year. Yeah. Um, similarly, I. I believe I haven't seen it, but the police chief um, put in a request for a new cruiser last year, and the capital planning committee's feedback was, "We can't do it this year, but please come back next year." We spent it out of ARPA; it wouldn't come out of capital. So, um, add that to the worksheet, like you know, a column that would, you know, have like you know, net effect on the budget. You know, yeah. Something well, like that, yeah. and when I when I look at your revenue replacement. In particular, the emergency radio upgrade is is kind of it's kind to me it's a no. I think that has to be done. Yeah, we got to do it. So well, and and you also have but you have, you also have the op opportunity, 
not only to, to replace the radios, but you're also able to get the necessary repeaters. Right. Because mm -hmm. we're going to need those. So, so that, that's, that's, to me, is, is something that, um, and, and, and if we can use the $7,000 from the uh, revenue replacement to purchase the firearms that the town voted to go ahead and do, that, that's, again, is, to me, is not. But the things that I would, you know, that I would have to have discussion on is the update the HVAC system at the public safety complex. Again, it seems like every time someone goes down there and does a study, they come up with something wrong. <laughs> I, I, I personally, I, I don't have a problem fixing it, but I, I don't, I have a problem fixing it over repeatedly right. and not solving the problem. Exactly. So, so before anybody does fifteen thousand dollars, someone needs to come and show us why we're going to do, and then take responsibility if it doesn't work. It's it's easy to right. it's, it's easy to thing. say oh yeah give me fifteen thousand dollars and I'll fix it and then they walk away and you still have the problem and and we've we've done at least two or three repairs on the HVAC system yeah yep. we've spent a lot more than we ever should have had to well, spend we shouldn't have to do it once but yeah and 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 so so somebody wants to come and tell me exactly what they're doing why they're doing it how and who's going to stand behind it that's fine. But I'm I'm not going to say oh yeah let's do it again. When when you talk about, um, you know some some of the other things. And again, I don't have problems with those, but I but I think we, what we should do is that it needs to be addressed in the community. Mm -hmm. You know when you when you look at some of the non non refundable you know on the, on the first thing. Mm -hmm. Well, how how are we looking at um, trying to decrease our carbon footprint here in town? None of the things that listed right there would address that. Uh, that would probably come up under the green communities thing, I would think, right? Because that's one of the goals of that is to reduce, or well, yeah, carbon footprint is a byproduct of reducing our energy costs and everything. But we could look at tying that into here. In other words, do we have like five things on our checklist that we need to get to? For green communities, you could put on here, you know, or something like that. Yep. I'm I'm just saying we should we we sh we shouldn't yeah. be afraid to look. We should be able we should look at a lot a lot of different things. Yeah. You know maybe that maybe that's when we get we get chart you know charging stations up, you know. We, right. We, Stuff like that. We, we, look at the way the government's talking in in 20 years or less than that, we're not going to have internal combustion engines. Well, when you look at the operating costs for electric cars, you can kind of see why. I mean, you know, you know, no oil changes. You know, you have brake jobs, sure, but you know, your fuel costs are way lower, and there's so many associated costs you don't have with that. So, so, so I, I, what, what I would do, Jeff, what I, what I'd recommend <clears throat> is that we put something on our web page, yep. and also talk to the school, talk to, talk to the fire police, and and let them know what you're trying to do. And, and and again, let's build consensus so that we can we can put this together and, and put together a solid plan. And when you say put it on the website, is that an invitation for people to Absolutely. give me ideas and say here are the category? Yeah. Because you know, unfortunately, um, environmentally friendly activities is not one of the. That's fine. You know. Yeah, but, that, but I think that but, but that's why you but that's what and again you, you know there may be a person out there watching tonight or tomorrow or the day after that may that may have an idea that we didn't think about though that yep. that idea should be we should we should we should solicit those ideas and not and and again we can't we can't we can't put everything in but we should have that discussion okay yep. You know, but you know, I, 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 for for the life of me, I don't, I do not have a problem for our workers, our police, fire, that that had, that that came in every that that came in every day through the COVID thing. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem giving them, you know, or 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 consider um, giving them a. Uh, a one-time bonus to compensate those employees for for their time that they came in, and 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 to tell you the truth, I don't think any monetary value 
would compensate those people that came in every day. Right. And, and it's not, it doesn't express the gratitude that I think that we feel approved by the state as the uh, animal inspector as well. Um, and so the select board needs to officially appoint Emmy Martin as the animal inspector. Right. Uh, make a motion. I second it. Okay, we have a motion made and second to uh, appoint Emmy Martin as the animal control officer. Animal inspector. Animal inspector. Animal inspector. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please certify by saying aye. 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 Three zero on that, Jeff. Okay. Uh, select board updates. Uh, I just I'll, I'll like to just point out Jeff that we're all the way down to select board updates and you haven't had to fix the phone once. So, so I think we've figured out what we the, figured problem the problem was. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be no, fully just getting it fixed. Thank you, Crystal, for fixing that. Yep. Right on it for nice you. Um, got our first Union 38 meeting this week. Kicking that off. So excellent. Yep. Now, do you need the snow doze? The no dose? <laughs> no, I'll be awake. That's for sure. Okay. Crystal? I have nothing this week. All right. Um, I think we're, we're, we're getting closer to the uh, the finishing up of the North Main Street project. Um, I, I think uh, that's something that will be talked about for a while, especially the final. I, I also um, want to mention um, the other day our elected state rep, Natalie, held a, a meeting at of the uh, TURS board. Yeah. Joint, it was a joint committee on tourism. Tourism, arts, and cultural development, I think. And it was held at Mike's Maze. Oh, yeah, excellent. And there, there was some, for anyone that attempts to say there's nothing to do in our area is not tied into the right people because there was a group, Natalie brought together some people that talked about the different um, things that were offered on a regular, and was explaining. And the chair of the committee was state senator from Fall River. Yeah. Um, and she had some very pointed questions, and there were some excellent responses to those questions. Um, if anybody knows anybody out there that wants to invest in anything, a hotel in Franklin County would go is sorely needed by from what we heard, right, Jeff? Yeah, I would think. So if if you have a few million dollars sitting around without a use designated use right now, um, you may want to consider looking into putting up a uh, hotel because there seems to be a uh, a really significant need for additional uh, spaces within within uh, Franklin County and along, actually the whole northern tier here. So, um, But with the, with it was a very uh, interesting conversation at, uh, and Dave Wisman was able to present um, Mike's Maze very well. Um, and there's a bunch of people in very nice clothes walking through a corn patch. I kind of thought was interesting. And it was a little muddy, a little slippery, but uh, um, but I guess I tell the story because it's important to realize what or how important it is to elect the right people. And Natalie's doing her work um, and she's doing good work and she's bringing people out to her district on a regular occurrence. And this is just one of many times that, that Natalie has done something like this and Joe Comerford. So uh, just let people know. Um, it, it was going on. Um, we had a lot of very in tune people at the state legislators that were here. That and one of them realized that if you miss an exit, 
in Western Mass, you have to go quite a way before you get off the next exit and turn around you and can. come back. You've got to pay attention to your exits. Yeah. So, um, I just thought that was kind of, you know, and when you're around Boston, you can go a mile or so and you can get to another exit, but here you have to go 10 yep. or more. So, that's it for me. Jeff, town administrator updates? Yeah, uh, just a couple things. Um, should have mentioned this when George was here, but um, the uh, Maya, which is our insurance provider, um, they have an annual risk mitigation grant, I think they call it. And so this year I reached out to all the departments and um, it looks like we will be applying for some safety gear for the highway department, including a manhole lift um, and a couple of collapsible um, traffic safety signs, I'd say. I think they're yeah, just they're sort of the diamonds that are a bright color. I don't think they say anything, but something yeah, they can easily doing work, deploy. Like tree if work work. Exactly. Yep. Um, a flammable um, chest, I mm -hmm. think, a cabinet, which in this case means in I don't know. It means Plain fire proof. prevention, <laughs> not for creating fires. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, one of the wheel measuring sticks. Oh yeah. And I thought there was one more thing, but maybe not. So um, you know, a couple of those things just to help increase the the safety for the highway department folks. Sounds like um, they might get some use out of the manhole cover lift. And yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. So. Um, and then uh, I spoke with um, the Gracious Greens folks about the community outreach meeting and mm. tentatively they're looking at November 17th okay. is a date which I believe is a Wednesday um, in the evening at six. And so as soon as we get the official notice we're going to put information on the website, get it out. They're going to send information to the abutters. They'll do their required uh, newspaper posting. Um, but we're just waiting on that from them. And then I don't know if the select board has had an opportunity to think about who they might want to appoint as the host community agreement negotiator or negotiators, probably only one select board member. Or I, um, I can do that if you guys. Fine. If it's something you want to do, go for it. <laughs> yeah, so I can. <laughs> I like how you put that. Oh, you want to do that? Sure. Well, no, I. If would you like to do it? No, if you want to, by all means, you're oh, okay. welcome to. If all right, I'll, I'll, I will, I'll take care of it. If nobody wanted to, I was willing to right. do it. But um, is, is that okay informally? I yeah, assume. That's okay. Fine. All right. yeah, we don't need to take a vote. Okay. Excellent. It's on uh, TV. Yeah. yeah it's recorded. Exactly. It's recorded in Zoom and it's on John records it, so we're, we're fine. Okay. So um, I think the next steps then at some point, uh, Tom and I will sit down and go through the draft that we have, see if we want to yep. make any initial changes, send it off to them, and then really start in earnest I after the community supposed, outreach. Don't right? they have to have a community outreach first? Uh, they, they are, have, yes. They have to have that hearing first. I th yes. I think that giving them an idea of what we're thinking about ahead of time so they can start thinking about it okay. wouldn't be, just, just so that they have it and they it would help they have an understanding. Not, but we, yes, we're not going to start yeah. until after the community outreach meeting. Absolutely. That is, uh, I, I think that is all I've got um oh i guess the the other thing is i think the tax classification hearing which typically happens in november mm -hmm. is um maybe delayed this year i, I reached out to uh the assessors and we're waiting for dor because we did a re Revaluation of all the properties in yeah. town, mm -hmm. so that may take a while for DOR to get back to us. Um, oh, so I, I just, you know, put out the reminder: Hey, it's the end of October. Typically, we do this in November. Uh, so, 
they're waiting for stuff from DOR, but. We haven't had a demographic enough of a change anyway to, you know, I think we know where we'll end up, so. Yeah. yeah. That's not a surprise. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Anything else? David, no. Marshall? I'm good. All, All right. right. Motion. I motion we adjourn. Second. A motion made and seconded to adjourn this uh, informative session of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0, declare us out at 728, please.